This is my 2016 Scion IM and it's my daily driver that I've had for six years now. You probably have seen these cars driving around and didn't think much of it because it just looks like a regular old hatchback. But it's actually a great daily. It's extremely slow. It gets good gas mileage even though right now it doesn't look like it does because I've been driving it like an ass because it's been snowing. It's comfortable. It's reliable. Dual zone climate control so your girlfriend can be baking on one side and you're totally normal on the other side. Relatively cheap. You can get it in manual, but I have the CVT because I commute and sit in traffic a lot. Well, I used to commute and sit in traffic a lot, not anymore. But yeah, overall, it's a great little car. Fierce and strut suspension in the front and double wishbone in the rear. So it handles pretty well. It handles in the snow extremely well, actually. Nokian Hakapalita are three tires on it in 195, 65, 16, I think. And these wheels are actually off of this car when I first got it. So these are 16 inch BBS, I think, Toyota dealership or Lexus dealership options back from the 90s. So these are very old wheels, but you can see I got them powder coated by premium coatings here in uh, Illinois. Just wanted to introduce you guys to the daily and I'm gonna show you how I got a couple of mods done to it. The fog lights, a couple other little things. So let's get right into it. I need to do some maintenance to it before I head out to Colorado. So for some reason, the rear driver's side rotor is totally warped. I have no idea why. It's brand new, but one of the four rotors warped. So I just got a new one. And then also the front sway bar end links are super loose and floppy. I hope that fixes my little clunking issue. So this car has a really weird clunk. Every morning when I start the car and I back up and I hit the brakes at the end of the driveway, there's one click. There's just click as soon as I hit the brake and then it never happens again until the next morning. I don't know if, I think maybe the brake pads are slowly like opening up and then when I hit the brakes, they slam together and make a click noise. It's pretty loud. I'm having a hard time diagnosing it because it only happens once in the morning. So like before I leave anywhere, I have to like put a camera somewhere and try to find it, but I've had no luck and it's really pissing me off. I highly doubt it's the sway bar and links, but I'm replacing them anyways. It started after I changed the brakes, so I have a feeling it's something to do with the brake. Now, I'm gonna show you my new wheels. New winter wheels. Ta-da! Actually, these are the old wheels, but I got them powder coated thanks to Premium Coatings in Blue Island, Illinois. Check out his Instagram, I got it in the description. Hit him up, he does a good job for a good price. They are freaking mint now. They used to look like they were from a war. Man, these are so light though, because they're legit BBSs and the tiny tires. If you're wondering why I'm replacing sway bar end links or when you should replace sway bar end links, let me show you the difference. So this is the old one. See this one? Very easy, I can just move it around. Here is the new one. Very stiff. That's how you know the difference or that's how you know when to change your end links. So if you, when they're on the car, you can go in there, grab it by the, you know, the thickest part and if you can wiggle it side to side, they're done. All right, so now that the maintenance portion of this video is done, it's time to do some mods to this car. So we're gonna start with the easiest, some stick-on window visors. I don't know why I like them. I just like driving with the windows cracked open and then no snow or rain or whatever gets in. So the fit in the front is kind of bad. These are from eBay. You can see there's pretty decent gap right here. It's also a pretty big gap. I think they're just being really generous with the tolerance. I'm gonna go do the other side 
and then we're gonna go on to the next thing. All right, next thing on the car, fog lights. Got these bezels off eBay. They were like 40 bucks, I think. And they actually came with fog lights. They came with these fog lights, which are pretty shitty. You guys know how I make all the diode dynamics stuff. I have diode dynamics on my drift car. So I thought, why not get their new elite fog lights? So these are the, in case you're wondering if you have an IM, the type B, I think these are, elite fog lights will fit the IM. So I have no idea how it installs, but probably figure it out. It shouldn't be too difficult. The eBay kit comes with all this wiring, so I've got to figure out where it goes. Pretty sure this just unclips. Only broke one clip. So it looks like if you want more cooling, you can just take this panel off. All right, it's the next day. I didn't really film the process of taking the interior apart and stuff because I was just trying to figure it out on how to do stuff. I got it figured out, I think. I also found a manual for a Corolla fog light installation. Think I have it figured out now. So let me just lay these things out. This is main harness for this whole thing. Goes to obviously fog light. This goes to a fog light. This connects to the battery. This goes to the relay that this comes with. This blue wire goes inside the car, which then connects to the switch. So that is the switch power. And then this plug goes to the switch, which is inside. Here's what's going on inside. You're gonna need to remove this it's super easy. This just unclips. Literally just pops right out. And then this guy, you need to remove the blank. It goes in here and just pry it out with a screwdriver. There's one screw back there. Take the screw out, this comes out. And then you pop your new switch in, it goes right here. I think what I'm gonna do is tap into one of these wires. I just gotta figure out which one of these turns on all of these lights, because all of these lights turn on as well. So you can just use the power from there. So that's the plan right now. I just gotta find which wire on that little harness. These wires are gonna go under here. It's a little different from the Corolla. The Corolla has a diff has a bolt-on radiator support. The lights, however, actually mount from the inside. So there's, see the little slot right there? I don't know if you can tell, there's a little slot right there. So the light slots into there and it's mounted from the inside actually. Green and black, the very first wire on the plug. That is a switched 12 volt source. You see it right there? All right, I got the whole loom. I don't know why there's so much wire in the loom. Got the ground right there on the, it's like behind the kick panel here on the floor. Man, if someone says it's hard to work on new cars, I think they're just dumb. It is really easy to work on new cars. Everything just clips in. Look at this dude, it just clips in. Boom, you get the point. How oh, freaking easy that is. The whole thing just comes apart with little clips. All right, you saw me run the wires underneath the radiator. I have the signal wire currently just, now I understand why it comes with this extra piece of red wire, cause it's not gonna be long enough to reach down there. But as you can see, switch is on. And as you can see, we got the fog lights on. Look at that cutoff, dude. Damn, that looks sick. Look how good these look. Love the glass element. It looks so sweet. So I put the ground right here. I don't really like that ground. I wish it was somewhere more on the chassis, not going, you know, whatever. It works. It's an LED. It's not that bad. So yeah, last thing I got to do now is run that through a grommet. All right, I got the wire through the grommet. Let me show you how I did it. Grommet is right there. You see it? You see the big wiring loom going in it? It's that big big circle right there that I'm pointing the flashlight at. On the bottom of it, all right, you see it right there? You see my screwdriver in it? So at the bottom of it, there's this little nipple sticking out. So I cut off the end of it and there's a hole in there. So then I tape the wire to a thin screwdriver. The longer, the better. And just shoved it in. Make sure you use lube. So now I'm gonna connect it to the switch and then I'm gonna, you know, tidy it up in there and run it through, probably gonna run it like right here. So you can't see it anywhere because it's a red wire and it sticks out like a sore thumb. All right, I didn't film putting the wire away, but 
think it looks pretty good. I can't really tell it's there. Unless you look really close. See it right there? It's attached to that body harness. And it goes around the strut tower here. And then in there. And then it's tucked in here. So the only evidence you have of it is this zip tie right here. The lights are both in. I didn't film any of the process because it's a pain in the ass. There's no way I could have gotten the camera in there. All you got to do is take off, yeah, this screw and that screw over there. And then this whole flap can just bend. You can just bend it back like this and you can got plenty of room in there. All right, so there's the headlights. And yep, fog lights are nowhere to be seen. Yeah, they're pointing straight down at the ground. So it looks like I need to do some major adjusting because they are nowhere to be seen. All right, I got it adjusted about halfway as high as the headlights. See headlights, fog lights. So let's see how that looks. Oh, right one's way higher. It's kind of weird arc too. I wonder if I mounted it not straight. All right, I think that's as good as I'm gonna get it. <laughs> they're pretty bright. I just don't know if the how high or low they're supposed to be pointing. So here's with the headlights off. Headlights on. My battery's gonna die. But I think they're gonna work pretty good. That's gonna wrap up this video, Ding Dongs. I'm sorry I didn't get any nice shots of the car driving or you know anything outside because we are having one of the coldest Christmas of all time. It is insane how cold it is. We have wind chills that are down to negative 35 Fahrenheit, which is insane. Like you go outside and your nostrils freeze instantly. And your face hurts. Can you hear that? It's insane how cold it is. We only got about two, three inches of snow, but the cold is just unbearable. So you see, I got the cargo box mounted on the car. I made these little brackets, just welded up those little brackets and then got bolts coming down from the top. Yeah, cargo box is done. It's mounted nice and solid on the car. Got the little lock here on the latch. Just got it on the front. Got all stainless hardware. Got that cargo box for free. Neighbor was throwing it away. So I just put all stainless hardware on it, painted it black and it's good to go now. So it's a little goofy how tall it is, but whatever, it was free. So I don't really care. And then I got the roof rack for hundred bucks off marketplace. That's gonna be it for me for this year, Ding Dongs. Taking the IM to Colorado. Gonna do some snowboarding, snowmobiling, all sorts of stuff. So I'll have a vlog of that coming out next year. We had an awesome year this year. The Nimbus was an absolute beast and you guys have seen all the new stuff coming for the Nimbus and all the new sponsors and everything. I still got a couple more sponsors to announce, so it's gonna be crazy. Thank you guys so much for all the support. It's been a great year. Yeah, everything's just going up from here. It's gonna get better, faster, louder. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Only about 20% of my viewers are subscribed, which is super sad. Make sure you subscribe. Go check out the Instagram, TikTok. I do all sorts of other stuff, little memes here and there. So thank you guys so much. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy new year. Peace out, ding dongs. I'll see you guys next year. America, America, America. Do you have your passport? Did you get your